raised from the dead with all power in his hand. In other words, in order to work there, all you have to do is believe in the man and the man sit next to the man. You've got to be willing to work unusual hours and travel a lot. If you decide to start working in the kingdom of God, let me explain what you have to do, what your work consists of. In Matthew, the 25th chapter, in the employee manual, well, let me talk to you about that. If you want to work for God, you have to read the employee manual. Because it was inspired out of his wisdom, and it was put there to guide us through our employment. In the 25th chapter, you'll find that the job requires that you, in the first half of that chapter, there was a parable given by the president where he required us to use the talents that the master has given us. And then we will be rewarded if we use those talents appropriately. However, if we slack or hide our talents on the job, you'll lose them. This is what you have to use your talents for because in Matthew 25, we are further instructed that we must feed those hungry folk around us. Hunger that's manifested both by the physical need and by our spiritual hunger. We must provide drink to those who thirst among us. We must meet strangers and entertain them and invite them in. For you never know that when you're meeting a stranger, you might be entertaining an angel. This is what the work requires us to do if we're going to come work with the company. Your promotion is dependent upon whether you're willing to do those things. Whether you're willing to feed the hungry, close the naked, go visit those that are sick and infirm, go into the prisons where there are people that are in need of us. That's what your work consists of. Understand that you'll have to work unusual hours because you'll always be on call. Sometimes you'll work, have to work from home. While we're on home a minute, we need to start working right there at home. Right. Kingdom work starts right there in the home and then it can spread abroad. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> the manual states that in Proverbs 22, 6, while we're talking about the home, that we should train up a child and where they should go. I submit to you that when Jesus encountered those multitudes of hurt people, that there were parents back in the home that had put them hurt people out there in society, much like we're doing now. Sometimes you'll be called in on your off days and you'll be needed while on break because as the text illustrates, there are many around us that are sick and hungry and in need of drink. And when you work for the kingdom, we must serve those needs whenever and wherever they present themselves. You must be willing to travel for there is no office. Sure, there are many branch offices spread out all across the world, similar to the one you're sitting in today, that you can go to on most Sundays and some Wednesdays, and on some churches you can only go to Sundays a month to praise. <laughs> Those branch offices are there for fellowship, education, and inspiration as you work for the company. But do not be fooled, this ain't no office job. Kingdom work needs to be done in the streets, on the back roads, in the cities, and in the rural areas on the inside of buildings, nightclubs and churches included, because we be in both of them, as well as on the outside in stadiums, ball parks, and nature trails. Wherever there is a hunger, thirst, nakedness, and sickness, you must go there. Now this is the good part. If you take the job, be prepared to receive compensation and fresh benefits that you never could have dreamed of. I can assure you you won't regret it. I, I can't assure you that there won't be ups and downs because there'll be people that's hating on you because you're working for a good company. They want to know how did you get that job but they're not willing to pay the price to work for the master. They're going to hate you, but the president says they hated me too. If you work hard trusting in the company, you will be able to receive all types of benefits. Upon your retirement, upper management has already prepared a place for you to reside with them. A place with more rooms than you could ever imagine. For it says, in my father's house are many mansions. If you have faith in the company, the handbook says that your, your faith, in John 14, 13 and 14, your faith will cause you to receive. They will do whatever it is that you ask of them. In John 3, 16, we are encouraged that if we believe in the Son, we will never perish. 
that we will have everlasting life. And what better benefit is there for anyone than to have everlasting life? Finally, if you work for the kingdom and believe in Jesus Christ, acknowledge and recognize He is the Son of God, you will, as promised in Matthew 16, 19, be given keys to the kingdom itself. He will give us the keys to the whole kingdom. Whatever we bind on earth, I remember when you preached about that, this about this. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Well, that sounds good, brother, but what does that mean? The dictionary says that bind means to forbid, refuse, or prohibit. We can forbid ourselves from that depression that I was talking about. We can refuse to accept the fact that we're broke. We can refuse to accept the fact that we're unemployed and denied a better life. We can prohibit ourselves from going to the places we used to go and do the things we used to do there. To lose means to permit or allow. With the kingdom keys, we can permit ourselves to accomplish our goals, heal our families, change our situations. We can allow ourselves to start looking for love in all of the right places and stop looking for love on a computer. <laughs> we got people in Florida, Mary, in love with people in Alaska who they have never seen. But God has loved them from the beginning. Been there through the right and through the wrong, through the rejection and the cheating, and he's been there and we won't even give him a call. Next time you're on the computer, go to Bible.org. <laughs> the economic situations we're facing today are tough, but it's been bad before. The old saying goes, tough times don't last, but tough people do. The kingdom of God is looking today for some tough people. Some people that are willing to work in the harvest, that are overcoming the tough times that we're going through. While many of us have found our money getting tight and some of our money is gone and it's been gone so long we don't know where it went, the kingdom of God is hiring right now. Some of us are working jobs that we shouldn't have been working at anyway. Some of us are working dead-end jobs that not only provide to, pro, fail to provide services to help God's people, but we were working jobs that did harm to God's people. It is time for you, if you fit into that category, to come on and do some kingdom work. Instead of feeling your days wasting away, wallowing in display, despair, and allowing your faith and hope to wane, God is waiting to bless you at this very moment. They're right, I was an attorney, and I still am. But the people that come in my office don't need no lawyer. So many people are coming broken. They're coming hopeless. They're coming looking for something that the law won't give them. They're coming looking for a job that will bring them some fulfillment, a relationship that will bring them some fulfillment. If you fall in one of those categories and you can't sue enough, so many folks have done you wrong and you want to get back at them, you need to think about that thing and come work with the kingdom today. Because while you're laid off, when was the last time you went to volunteer at a shelter? While you were laid off, when did you go talk to a battered woman shelter? If you're a woman yourself who's been through it, and while you're working, God can use you to work miracles for them. If you're a father out there who's not working, why don't you drive across town and spend some time with your kids and you haven't seen them in a while? See, there's a lot of work that's out there to be done. While you're unemployed, why don't you go into the prison and talk to somebody, a close relative of yours who you have not talked to in a long time? There's work to be done. And God's calling on you to do it. Please accept this job while you still have time. There's an opening today. There's an opening right now. If you can believe that Jesus died on the cross to save you from your sins, if you're willing to trust Him, all the days of your life, and our deacons and our elders come right.